I just showed you a short clip of the things uh, I like to do. So welcome to our class. This is environmental issues and concern. Please be sure that you are really enrolled to this class or else you will not get any grades if you are not really enrolled to this class. In this class session, we will actually discuss um, class policies and lecture topics. But before we go to that, let me introduce to you myself. I am Pearl Aphrodite B. Karnisek. I am currently assistant professor too. I actually took um, the same program like yours. I graduated with Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science last 2011. Before, our program is actually called BENS, that's B-E-N-S. But I think somewhere 2016 or maybe 2017, it was already called as B-S-E-S -E or the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science program, which is the program that you are also enrolled. So um, I'm not bragging, but I was actually a consistent dean's lister. I hope you will be too. Right after college, I decided that I really want to do graduate school in which I enrolled myself with the Master of Science in Soil Science and my minor in Tropical Ecology. I studied my master's in Visay State University and I am actually a DOST, AST, HRDP scholar. So DOST, AST, HRDP, uh, stands for Department of Science and Technology. The AST HRDP stands for the Accelerated Science and Technology Human Resource Development Program. It's actually a scholarship for graduate students. There are only few universities in the whole Philippines that is accredited with the DOST AST HRDP. If you are interested for graduate school, Google for the requirements of that scholarship, in which also, of course, uh, let me remind you, if you really want to do graduate school, one of your tickets to go to grad school is for you to have good grades. So, you know, start us now. Have good grades. Boom. <laughs> so, uh, right after right after master's, I applied to our university, EBSU main campus. I actually started as a substitute instructor. I got lucky again. After a few weeks, I think, or after a few months, they offered me a regular faculty position. Somewhere in 2015, um, Actually, somewhere 2014, I wrote a letter saying that I really want to do my PhD as early as that time. I'm so thankful they approved to it right away. I started my PhD in early 2015. So I went to the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. I took Doctor of Philosophy in Environmental Science. I just graduated last December 2019, but actually I am part of the batch 2020. At the same time, I got very lucky again because um, during those time, I am actually a CHED Faculty Development Program 2 Scholar. That scholarship is actually offered to faculty members and staff. But today, Faculty Development Program Scholarship is not offered anymore. It transformed into K-12 scholarships. The K-12 scholarships does not only offer scholarships in the Philippines, but they also offer scholarship outside the country. In the future, you may want to apply for that. You know, you, you may want to do your master's or your PhD outside the country. So that would be really great. And above all, you know, please don't forget to go home and help our country. Somewhere in 2017, I got very, very lucky again. I applied for a Fulbright scholarship and I got lucky as i said i went to florida state university from 2017 to 2018 i actually went there as a full body scholar as a phd visiting researcher i did all of my dissertation experiments and analysis in the national high magnetic field laboratory this laboratory is actually one of a kind you can actually google them when i was there i was actually under the department of earth ocean and atmospheric science of the florida state university I'd like to travel, in which uh, it's been, you know, like everybody else, it's been hard for us uh, because of what is happening, because of the pandemic. But, you know, for the greater good, we have to stay at our homes and, you know, uh, enjoy it and be comfortable with it. So, that's me. It's basically me. It's basically me. So, my office or consultation hours is usually one hour 
before and one hour after the class. My office in the science building, third floor. I hope one day, if everything gets better, you will be able to um, walk the stairs to the third floor of the science building and visit our office. Um, one day I know. One day I know, for sure. So, um, however, since there is no face-to-face -face classes for the whole semester, all you have to do to set an appointment is email me. As you all know, this is my email address. My email address is pearl.kernise.wrong. It's pearl.kernise at evsu.edu.ph. Okay, so let's go now to the course description. This is a directed reading course. The lectures will be given to provide context, background, introduction to major topics, and explain key concepts discussed in the readings. So this is actually an integration of the different knowledge you acquire in your environmental science courses or subjects. In this subject, we will actually integrate those and we will focus on specific environmental issues and concerns. Hence, students are highly encouraged to participate actively in class discussions to maximize their learning experience. Environmental concerns are firmly based on the country's political agenda and are reflected in the changing policies of the government. With this course, the department wants to imbue to the student a firm grasp of the development and management of environmental issues related to environmental problems. So the students are expected to understand the ways in which humans affect the environment and how they can use a variety of skills and approaches in developing appropriate environmental policies. With those course description, we also have few learning outcomes. First learning outcome is to understand the concepts and relationships of environmental management and development in the context of global and local scenarios. Second, analyze and interpret the results of interactions between society and environment for policy and decision-making purposes. All right, so here are the different lecture topics. On our week one, um, this is actually what we are doing right now. We will have the course overview or the class overview. We will discuss uh, also the mission, vision, goals, and objectives, requirements, class policies, and grading system. Of course, the requirements. So we will have paper discussion, maybe one film or two films, depends on our uh, time. And of course, we also have the second paper discussion in which you will have to read the book of Alan Wiesman. So this is entitled The World Without Us. It's actually a very good book and uh, it's one of the books that you should include, books that you have read. So on week two, uh, we will discuss chapter one, which is the introduction to environmental issues and concern. On week three, we'll focus on human population. Part of the human population, we will discuss the IPAT, IPAT or the IPAT model. And then we will also discuss overdrafting, this is the extracting of groundwater, and the environmental impact of the coal industry. Later on, you will observe that there is actually a general environmental issues and concern. And then on that, I chose only few, one, two, three topics from it. So for example, as, I, as you can see, we have human population. Under human population, we will discuss the IPAP, the overdrafting, and environmental impact of coal industry. And then on the next chapter, which is chapter 3, which is on hydrology, we will discuss the environmental impacts of reservoir, like environmental impacts of, of a water dam. Next is intensive farming. So we will focus on the environmental effects of meat production and of course the plastic culture. On chapter 5, we will discuss land use. This is, uh, we will focus on the built environment. This is the kind of environment that is man-made, for example, a city which is a man-made and then we will also discuss urban heat island and urban sprawl on chapter 6 we will discuss nanotechnology and the impacts of the nanotechnology and then we will have um, chapter 7 which is the natural disaster and disaster mitigation after that we will have our midterm and then we will move on to chapter 8 which is um, nuclear issues 
under the nuclear issues is uh, we will discuss nuclear radiation accidents and safety and the high level radioactive waste management. The reason why I want to include nuclear issues I may not be able to find nuclear power plant in the Philippines but nuclear power plant is actually one of the major sources of energy in the whole world. Most first world countries has a nuclear power plant because it's actually cheap. Maybe it's expensive to have the plant at first but the energy that is produced on a nuclear power plant is relatively cheap. However also um, there are things that we have to consider if if your country is not really ready when it comes to disaster related to nuclear plants, that might be a problem. In which we will discuss, you know, radioactive accidents and how are we going to make it safe or safety precautions. And of course, how are we going to manage radioactive waste? Because maybe in the future, you know, you might go out to the country and might study there or work there and you might find yourself working in a nuclear power plant and at least, you know, you already have a background. So, why not? Next is chapter 9. We will discuss space debris. We might not realize it yet since we are, you know, inside the Earth, of course. There are only few people who went outside Earth, who went to space. So, we might not be an issue right now, but I'll tell you, there is already a lot of space debris. It already have an orbit. It's already orbiting the Earth. Of course, as we all know, there's no bacteria in space. Of course, there is no decomposition in space because there is no oxygen, right? So in which this debris would actually just float in space, basically float in space. Next is we will discuss on water pollution, focusing on mercury and fish, and of course, the microplastics. Chapter 11, we will discuss on mutation breeding and genetic pollution. Next chapter is genetically modified organisms. We will focus on genetically modified crops and genetically modified livestock. Chapter 13 is toxicants, focusing on asbestos, bioaccumulation and biomagnification, and persistent organic compounds. And of course, chapter 14, which is focusing on waste. Focusing on Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and the marine debris and then of course on week 18 we will have a wrap up you know a lot of time for possible and submitted requirements so actually let me remind you that the summer like 18 weeks if we don't need time then we might have our final exam on the 18th i hope and pray that we will be able to discuss all the topics in our course content okay so we have few requirements First requirement is the two paper discussion, which is the film or films and the world without us by Alan Wiesman. And then we also have one presentation of topic or topics, maybe just one topic. And of course, the midterm and the finals. I want to remind everybody, and I think you are already under me before, that it's actually quite easy to pass the subject. You might be able to get a flat one as long as you will submit requirements. Free to pass, of course. Okay, so if you have questions, I will be giving a Google link for your questions. So let's go now to the grading system. So for major exams, it's only 30%. The reason for that is major exams are number one, time pressure. But as you can see in your paper discussion, it is 50%. And as you know, paper discussion, you will have your own time in doing it. And you will be given enough time to do it. So it's very important that you will do good in your discussion paper. Always be reminded that I will always check your paper for similarity index. I will use plagiarism checker and turn it in. So please do not cheat, please, or else you will get zero, you know. Of course, we will have quizzes, 10%, and recitation, which is 10%. So, as the way I do it to make it easier to calculate your grades, I transform it into a point system. So, 375 points. For you to pass and get the 75%, you have to get 375 points. 
So it's actually easy for you to calculate and easy for you to check if you are passing or almost passing or not passing. Okay. So this is the grading system. This is actually based, again, on the EVSU student handbook. You can check it yourself. Flat 1 is 495 to 500. So that's the upper limit to lower limit. For the 3.0, 375 to 380 points. For the attendance, attendance will be checked. There will be sitting arrangement. Please be comfortable with your seats. But this is not really applicable in our remote class. This is applicable to the face-to-face -face class. However, now that we are doing remote classes, it's much easier to check with your attendance. I will explain this to you further as we go to our learning management system. Of course, um, student who incur three and excuse absences will be reported to SASU for disciplinary measures. This might not be really applicable to us right now. But in a face-to-face, -face, I'm just giving you a heads up. Three and excuse absences. In so absences will only be considered excuse if an excuse letter from a guardian, landlord, dorm, advisor, parent, teacher, or medical certificate with dates is presented in connection to illness, accident, death of an immediate family, maximum one week, God forbid, travel that is approved by the dean of students. As I mentioned earlier, we will be using a learning management system. We will be using Moodle as the official learning management system of EVSU. Honesty is the best policy. So everyone is expected to be honest. A student caught cheating will be given a grade of zero for the quiz, exam, or problem set where he or she is caught. Please take note that when you do your paper discussion, it will be subjected to similarity index or plagiarism checker. Usually 5% Duplication percentage is already considered as a plagiarized paper. Since this is, uh, let us say, college level, not really for publication level, maybe we can increase that to 10% or 15%. But let me warn you that definitely if your similarity index or your duplication index is so high, definitely you will get zero for that paper. If you have questions, I will be uh, giving a Google Form link. Thank you for listening and viewing the lecture video. I will see you on our next lesson.